Hey guys. Hello, hello. What's up? Happy Labor Day. She's uh, zoomed into my face. I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's going on? Happy Labor Day to you as well. Oh man, what have you been, what have you been up to today? What'd you do um, on your day off? Man, there's no barbecue today, surprisingly, but my uncle usually does one, so it's probably going to happen uh, in the next 30 minutes. So. Oh wow. So far, so far we're good. We're good to go. Oh no. How are you? What's going on? I'm okay. I'm okay. I spent most of the day like just resting, recuperating. I'm back in the office tomorrow. So got to like, got to take advantage of the days off while you can, right. you know. Okay. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if this is your first time tuning in every Monday, we have what's called Mentorship Mondays, where we talk to um, our different minds about their professional backgrounds, their journeys, and tips and advice they'd give to people who are interested in doing the same. This week, we have a special guest, and that is Elijah Bilford. Did I say your, your last name correctly? That's that's better than most. I, oh, know. no. So much. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How do you no, say it? No, it is the right way, though. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, good. I'm super, I'm super type A about names. Like, okay. don't, don't be disrespectful. Get it right. So this week we have um, Elijah Bilfert, who's a computer engineer. Mm -hmm. And um, you actually have an interesting backstory with the, our founder of Minds of Jamaica, Kamir, right? Yes. How did you guys meet? Um... We met at a Carissa Caribbean Student Association um, event, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he just we just started talking. And next thing you know, I was his, I was his roommate. And next thing you know, we've been friends for over five, six, seven years. Oh my God! Yeah, Zero to one hundred. Yeah, real it quick. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an interesting uh, conversation, but it was it was fun. He's a good guy. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we know that you're a computer engineer. Can you talk a little bit about like what you do currently? Like what's the, what are your everyday um, responsibilities, routine? What does, what does that mean exactly? Sure. Okay. So I first want to say congratulations on your first year, um, one year anniversary. I'm very yes! proud of that. I'm very happy. Um, I feel like, you know, it's just the beginning. So the first couple of years are probably going to be tougher, right? Yeah. But you guys are making it when you put yourself in a position of purpose like this one with such Absolutely. impact and Absolutely. your true purpose is coming your way yeah that's and there's great. nothing greater than that so congratulations you guys got a great team and I'm, I'm over here just rooting in the background like yes this is something that's needed and i'm glad it's it's being addressed here um as far as me computer engineering is a um it's a mixture of computer science and electronics mm -hmm. um and <laughs> and um what i've been doing on a, on a, on a daily basis um I would wake up, uh, <laughs> <laughs> go to work, and okay. once um, once I get to work, then I have to I have to figure out um, what's needed. Right? Mm -hmm. um, it's really a day to day uh, analysis of what's needed as far as um, as far as severity. Right? We call step one an mm -hmm. issue that needs immediate attention. Okay. Um, so if a whole lab is down, then obviously I need to be you know, I need to be concerned and I yeah. need to address it. Um, so we address the different severity and um, we also address, uh, we also have to attend a bunch of meetings. That's mm -hmm. one of the biggest parts of what I'm doing right now is being mm -hmm. in, in a meeting and um, yeah. whether or not it's needed, you just have to attend and make sure you're there and uh, you have to speak um, your opinion. Yeah. Uh, and after, after addressing the meetings, then um, I'm doing a couple of things. I have a couple of hats, right? I am a, uh, lab administrator so I have, i'm in charge of a bunch of workstations um mm -hmm. uh, computers servers networks um and i'm also part of environments management which mm -hmm. necessarily means i am um i'm helping the qa the quality analyst testers okay. um on uh, certain applications and that's just you just keep going day to day day mm -hmm. to day day to day mm -hmm. and then eventually you you build your ranks and you keep growing so it sounds like a lot of what you have to do, unlike the rest of us, where so much of our so much of our work we're able to we're able to do remotely. It mm -hmm. sounds like much of what you're doing requires you to physically be in the office in the lab. Is that um, accurate? Uh, sometimes, yes. Okay. Because I, I just happen to be a lab admin on this certain project, 
but most yeah. of the time with um, computer engineering, everything can be done remotely. Um, oh, there's actually awesome. a whole system um, yeah. that uh, you can use where you can remotely, uh, you remotely log onto a bunch of different computers. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, a very, uh, it's a very efficient one, especially right now in this era. Um, yeah. Where going in the office right now is kind of taboo. And they, they pretty much don't advise us to go unless it's a necessity. Oh, wow. That was going to be my next question is like, mm -hmm. how is your how has your work been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic or has it? everything? <laughs> so everything right now is, is different. Right? Yeah. Um, the building last time I've been I've been I still go like once every two weeks. Last okay. time I went, it was it was just gray. It was empty. Wow. Um, we Ghost we town. go inside. There is like a um, they have like a, a scan system. They don't even get mm -hmm. close to you. They have a whole like laser type scanner. Oh wow! Um, that that I guess gets to your forehead of your head and calculates your temperature. And mm -hmm. um, I've never seen someone being turned around. So I'm not sure what the requirement is, I, I <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. but that's that's all they do. Um, yeah, I've never seen someone cough, but they, they provide um, for me at least they provide gloves, uh, mm -hmm. hand sanitizer, mm -hmm. um, masks, obviously, and um, but yeah, everything's changed. Mm -hmm. All I know so far is um, we we're supposed to go back to the office in November, and then the whole conversation just ended last week. So we have no clue what's going to happen next. And that's very interesting. So you're currently based in Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. For work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you also went to school in Georgia. Uh, yes. Where did you go to school? I went to the University of Georgia. Okay. Uh, it's in Athens. It's uh, mm -hmm. really nice. I have a lot of friends there still. All right. Can you talk a little bit about like your college experience? What did you study? Sure. I studied computer engineering. Um, mm -hmm. I, I joined in 2011, and the College of Engineering started officially in 2012. Okay. So as I was learning how to be an engineer, they were learning how to be a school, right? Oh, wow. So it was a very interesting um, dynamic because mm -hmm. the whole time I was trying to figure out um, what, uh, what, to, what to address, um, mm -hmm. how to get mentors, uh, which mm. class to go to, and mm. it, was, it was just an interesting dynamic. And I know mm -hmm. for a fact um, at UGA, there were a couple of organizations like uh, NSBE, National Society yeah. of Engineers, yeah. and um, CARIBSA, Caribbean Student Association, that I joined where um, it was, it, that's, that's where I got my hope from. Yeah. Right? Because it's just, it's just good to see that kind of representation, mm -hmm. just as your peers, because when you see someone going through a similar struggle, yeah. then everything changes, right? You realize, oh, I'm not by myself. I'll be all right, right? And that changes everything. But overall, UGA was tough, but it was very fun. Mm. And it also sounds like those organizations kind of gave you a community as well, which is like very important as it, it you're as whole, you're navigating an academic space. Yes, it became a whole family, right? Because remember, yeah. UGA is a PWI, right? Yeah. So when you see people that look like you, that have been through your experience, people that are not from here like you, going through mm -hmm. the same things you're going through, then it gives you more motivation. Mm -hmm. And how did you choose UGA? Um, so I, I got here through, um, I came from Haiti uh, mm -hmm. in 10th grade, right? And mm -hmm. so I came here in high school. Um, mm -hmm. I got here and I went through, I went to uh, Grayson High School. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew I wanted to be in technology, but I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know um, my, my dad, my uncle, uh, a couple of my uncles actually, they are into technology. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always been something fascinating to me because they're the smartest people I know. Yeah. Right? So to me, that was like, that was like the go-to. But I never mm -hmm. knew why. I just thought it was just, you know what, it's in my blood. Let me just, let's just go with it. Yeah. Um, so when I graduated high school, um, when I graduated Grayson, I applied to, obviously, I had to apply to tech. Mm -hmm. I applied to MIT. I didn't get in. Mm -hmm. I did get into tech, but mm -hmm. UGA ended up taking me with a, with a scholarship. So oh, I, wow, just, that's awesome. I just loved, I just loved UGA. And then my plan was to go back to tech, right? That was my yeah. plan of jump because tech is like the school here for engineering yeah. or just technology in general. Yeah. And when I got to UGA, I just met a bunch of people and I realized, you know what? 
I'll be all right. I'll be fine here. You know, it's not that bad. Um, yeah. And I, I never, I never ended up transferring or applying anywhere else. I just, I just toughed it out, and yeah. uh, it worked out. So one of the things that we try to emphasize with a lot of our mentees mm -hmm. is like the importance of being intentional about your academic experience mm -hmm. and like what sort of what sort of factors you need to take into account as you're deciding these next steps. Like it should never be just a random, oh, that place looks cool, so I'm going to go right. there. Like there's so many other things that you should factor in to make sure that it's the most holistic experience possible. Can you talk a little bit about like kind of what were some of the things that you were looking for as you started to consider colleges and universities and what UGA, you think, what UGA gave you? So as far as factors, one of the biggest things for me was money, right? Because, um, yeah. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> Cause, cause <laughs> that's real. <laughs> loans, aside from a house, right? Loans are going to be the biggest debt that you have in mm. your life. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things people don't understand yet. It's hard to yeah. grasp when you're still in school, but yeah. when you get out, you realize like, oof, what? Ooh, was it was it really worth it? Right? Because you can go through a bunch of different schools. Yeah. You with the with less loan and learn the mm. same thing. So is mm -hmm. the name worth it to you? That's yeah. what you got to figure out at one point. You know, obviously, mm, that's you a word. scholarship, obviously, like, that's, that's a no-brainer. So I feel like money to me was number one. Mm -hmm. And then two, obviously, was um, the education, the culture. Mm -hmm. um, and UGA was, I believe, one of the first schools in Georgia in general, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, they've been here. They have enough experience. They have a good culture. They have a nice campus, honestly. Um, and I remember I, I, um, I went to that campus at least once before I, I, I accepted it. Yeah. And um, I loved it. It's a mm -hmm. really big campus. It's, it's really the whole city. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a college town. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to get comfortable in. Yeah. And how, you talked a little bit about kind of when you started, the School of Engineering was mm -hmm. like, was still kind of up and coming then. Yes. So how important would you say like internships were and in also helping you um, like find a job after um, after graduation? Like, do you think that balance between practical experience and like um, learning in the classroom is important? Absolutely. Um, I never had an internship, but I did okay. have a job. I was like the tech guy at one of the um, one of the student centers. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was in the team where you're fixing uh, laptops, computers, uh, projectors, um, pretty much everything. And yeah. I think, um, I think that gave me enough experience as far as what I'm doing now, because yeah. it helped me understand, um, people skills, right. It mm -hmm. helped me understand how to, um, how to, uh, analyze, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, attack a certain issue. And it helped mm -hmm. me understand how to just deal with different classes right you're dealing with teachers yeah. you're dealing with your own boss you're dealing yeah. with students you're dealing with your own friends that are just happen to be around right so mm -hmm. you have to you have to address different levels at the same time yeah um, but i do know for sure as far as internships i went to a lot of career fairs mm -hmm. and um i did have a counselor in the engin engineering department um and her, her main thing her, her name was kelly um kelly saucy her okay. main thing was um just go to as many career fairs as possible and you just might get a chance to um, to to reach to reach somebody, and then they might yeah. give you an internship. I know for sure I didn't get one my freshman year. My mm -hmm. sophomore year, I almost did, but I had to do it um, during my summer semester. But I had summer classes, so I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then my junior year, I just started applying just to get out of college. So yeah. I never really got a chance to get into um, an internship. Uh, you also mentioned that you, um, up until tenth grade, you were living, um, you were living and going to school in Haiti, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about your transition, like from, <laughs> from living in <laughs> Haiti to moving to the United States, especially at such like a pivotal age, like in high school? I I can't even I can't even imagine what right. that like what that transition uh, must have looked like. Sure. Okay. So. Um, you know, my parents sent me to the States, the American dream, right? Um, mm -hmm. you go to the, you go to the States, learn, be an engineer. That's like the, the dream is like, is there just be yeah. an engineer, learn yeah. as much as you can. That's the only yeah. reason you're here. Just focus, oh, wow. get distracted oh, wow. and, you know, get in, get out, 
and you know make us money after that's, Ooh, no that's pressure like Caribbean parent like <laughs> line right there um but I do remember when I just came here uh in 10th grade um school-wise right academically mm -hmm. it was very smooth yeah. I think um I think the the school system the French system in Haiti was a lot more um a lot more developed uh, mm -hmm. a lot more advanced so when mm -hmm. I came here especially when it came to math uh, mathematics mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. just I, I just knew what I was doing. The only class yeah. I know for sure I struggled in was history because mm. it was just a different history altogether. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not it's it's not the same. Um, yeah. so you have to reset everything you thought you knew, even mm -hmm. though it might be a lie, right? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. but I knew as far as fitting in, that was an issue at first for me because mm. uh, I had uh, I had an accent. And it yeah. wasn't um, it wasn't a, a, a nice French accent. It was more of like a Haitian Creole mixed with French, mixed with English. And in Haiti, I was <laughs> learning Spanish as well, right? Oh, so wow. you're, you're mixing all those things. So I ended up not speaking one thing perfectly, right? <laughs> and it was just, it was just, oh uh, man. I remember, I remember because I had those conversations of um, where are you from whenever I spoke, yeah. right? And it, it, it went, because, you know, in high school, those students are not mature enough to have this conversation. So it'll, it'll go from, where are you from, to, are you Jamaican, or are you oh, sure wow. you're not from? No, why would I lie about that? Like, I'm pretty sure I lived there. <laughs> <laughs> so I know for a fact, it, it, went, it got to a point where I started speaking less, or I spoke, mm. um, or I spoke slower, wow. right? Because when you speak slower, your your accent doesn't come out. You, you're not mm -hmm. excited. You're, you're, it doesn't come out at, at all. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I ended up doing. And then after a while, I just kind of embraced it. Um, mm -hmm. I even changed my name. My, my real name is not even Elijah. That's the whole point of me changing it is because it's an easier yeah. name to, it's my middle name. It's easier to remember, right? And that was the whole point. I remember in high school, I was trying to fit in so hard, not realizing yeah. that you're supposed to fit out at some, yeah. at some point. So what was um, finding a, like a Caribbean community? How do you think at UGA, mm -hmm. how do you think that kind of impacted like your identity and sense of self and helping you kind wow, of? That was, that was so underrated because at UGA, just finding a black community in general. Yeah. Is just, yes. You know, um, so just Caribbean was so close, mm -hmm. right? It was so close to home that mm -hmm. it reminded you of home. Okay. Right, and those those became one of my closest, some of my closest friends, right? Yeah. Because that's where you realize, like, wow, I'm not, I'm not in this by myself. Yeah, and that was powerful. Like mm -hmm. at, at the moment, honestly, I didn't even think about it. Right at the moment, I'm thinking, you know, that I, I guess that's my crew now. You know, let's let's see how this goes. Um, yeah. Because you know, you, you try to join different different organizations, um, and then one of them is eventually going to click, and when it mm -hmm. clicks it becomes real, it becomes family. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the wild thing is that like being multilingual is honestly a gift. You have people who go their entire lives and are never mm -hmm. able to reach proficiency in one other language. Yeah. So like the fact that, the fact that you have this toolkit like ready, armed and ready, mm -hmm. like how has that helped you professionally? professionally it helps me it helps me relate more right because yeah. remember i'm in technology so it's, it's very um asian right mm -hmm. it's asian white mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. everything else yeah right? um so so it's easier for me to relate because english is basically my third language okay. right so it's easier for me to understand like hey you're from a different culture and that's okay you still know what you're doing and I'm yeah. still going to work with you because this is what you do and this is how we work together. Because at the end of the day, if the work is being done, mm -hmm. that's what that really matters, right? So yeah. I, I know for sure it helped me understand how to walk into different rooms and mm -hmm. how to fit in, mm -hmm. right? And it's, 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 it's easy to, for me to understand different cultures now, especially when I just joined, because mm -hmm. a lot of things, like especially like, um, for example, just an example, the, in the Indian culture, um, mm -hmm. when they say yes, they might shake their head this way. <laughs> That's right? so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. So you have to you have to learn different cultures, um, and, and just adapt and be flexible. And that's a major thing in my field. Mm -hmm.
What do you think are some common misconceptions that a lot of students have about um, pursuing STEM related fields? Uh, okay, for, for STEM in general, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like one of the biggest ones is we're only um, book smart. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. I, I get that a lot, right? Like we don't know mm -hmm. how to deal with people and we're only on computers. Because, yeah. you know, in most movies, um, the, the, the tech guy is in a computer with a matrix screen, um, just just typing his life away in a dark basement, right? Mm -hmm, that's, that's, what mm -hmm. you're, like, that's what you see. That socially you, awkward archetype. Exactly, and that's what mm -hmm. you, you learn. Um, so that's what you start expecting. Um, yeah. Even in my field, right, you, you'll see someone with uh, people skills, someone with a sense of humor, and be like, yeah. what, what is this? What, what, is this? what is this unicorn? Um, <laughs> but, but that's something that should be normalized. Right? Yeah. That's really something that should be normalized because that's just how it should be. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Another misconception, for me at least, I know um, when someone here comes computer engineering, they're thinking an actual workstation, an actual desktop, yeah. where you know you have to type in. No, like computer just means a machine that can compute, right? Yeah. It could be your smartphone. It could be, you know, it, it could be anything that you can think of that has technology into it. Um, and computer engineering or computer science in general can send you into so many different fields, right? You have networking, you have, um, you have cybersecurity, that's a big mm -hmm. one. Um, you, right now you have artific artificial intelligence, yeah. right? So all yeah. those fields are very powerful and that doesn't mean you're coding somewhere in a basement. And that's, that's one thing I feel like is a big, big misconception. But it's so interesting that you talked about kind of like these stereotypes and characteristics that we project onto um, onto a lot of engineers. Mm -hmm. um, like, what are some soft skills that you think are just as important to bring to the table? And what are some like things that students can be doing now to begin to cultivate them? Um, there, there's a lot of groups, right? Um, I would think for students, I'll start with that, right? For students, I would say um, join organizations that help you develop your um, your uh, professional skills, right? Mm -hmm. Go to career fairs just to know what mm -hmm. it's like. Have mm -hmm. one of those uh, uh, elevator speeches ready. Yeah. So just, just, just know who you are and what you want. That's one of the biggest things because if you're going to be an engineer, right? If you're going to be in, a, in computer science, just know why you're doing it because yeah. you are probably going to hit the wall. And mm. when you hit it, if you don't have the why, you're going to turn around and run away. Dang, right? You, that's like, so true. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's the realest advice I can give you if, you, if, you, if you're coming in, into that field. Because um, they actually give you the uh, look to your left, you, to, you look to your right speech. Right? Yeah. And, and that's like, well, first of all, I didn't even read the syllabus yet. Why are you doing this? Right? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's one of those situations where you need to know that you're going to take a couple L's, mm. just brush it off, and keep mm. going. Because yeah. the other side is beautiful. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I think, um, yeah, I think that's the biggest advice I can give anyone who's joining this field. That, because yeah. it's, not, it's not supposed to be easy. If mm -hmm. it was easy, everyone would do it, right? And you have to have a why. It can't just be money, trust me. If it's mm. just money, you're going to mm. switch. It's, it, it has to be, you have to have, you have to feel alive when you're doing some part of it. You have to feel something. Because if you don't, then you're going to hit those, um, those major classes where you have to actually do a project in that field. And you're going to realize, like, that, that, that's really not for me. You don't want to wait till your junior class to, to, to change your mind, right? Yeah. Building resilience, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did you have any mentors who um, kind of helped and guided you along your academic and professional journey? Um, it's funny you say that because I feel like I had to become a mentor because, like I said, I studied in 2011. The School of Engineering studied in 2012. So that was a semester slash yeah. year after. Um, so yeah. I was just off top. I became an old head because I was growing <laughs> with <laughs> I was growing with, wow. the, with the with the with the um, with the school. Yeah. So um, even even like last year or a couple of years ago, I, I did um, I did it twice. I was a mentor for a couple couple guys. Essentially, mm -hmm. you're you're teaching them how to uh, you're, you're you're helping them um, with 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 just just basic guidance, right? Yeah. 
where should you go? What should you think about doing if you if it's your freshman year, if it's your junior year, if it's your sophomore year? Um, what should you think about doing in terms of um, organizations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which career fair should you go to? Because there are different mm -hmm. career fairs and there's one for technology at UGA. Um, who should you talk to, right? Who, what, what's a good teacher to, <laughs> which class to go to, right? So all of those are, are, are very needed advice because you don't, so, sometimes you don't want to learn those the hard way. Um, and as far as me getting a mentor, I know for sure the, the closest thing I had to representation was my peers, yeah. right? And, and yeah. like I was saying earlier, that's, that, you know, that, that's, that's good enough. At least mm -hmm. at the time, it was good enough for me because I realized I wasn't alone. If, if he can do it, I can do it. Look, like, <laughs> if he's getting out of this class, then I guess I just got to tough it out. Absolutely. And you have a whole cohort of, like, Black engineers that you're mm -hmm. coming up with. Right. Like, that's amazing. Exactly. A lot of people don't necessarily, don't necessarily have that. Right. Like, it really sounds like you're able to cultivate, like, a really strong really strong community like and it just was able needed. to it was needed because those are guys that are in your classes mm -hmm. right so you're mm -hmm. seeing them not just in the meetings but you're seeing them in class Absolutely. and you're you're seeing them struggle with you mm -hmm. and sometimes that's all that's needed you helping them they're helping you or you're going through it together mm -hmm. guys so those of you who are just tuning in we're talking to um we're talking to elijah bilford who's a computer engineer. And um, any questions that you have for him, please feel free to drop them, um, drop them in the comments. We want to make sure that we're, uh, we want to make sure that we're answering all of your questions and really utilizing his, um, his knowledge. So I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of people who are interested in pursuing STEM related fields um, might be a little intimidated by like, this idea that um, advanced degrees are um, kind of required to um, to work in the field. Do you think that's Do you think that's accurate? Has that been like a representation of of your journey, or that's how important a, how important do you think getting an advanced degree is? That, that's a that's a tricky one, right? Um, I feel like it depends it depends on the engineering um, the engineering uh, type. Right? Okay. Because uh, if you have medical engineering, biochemistry, mm -hmm. biochemical engineering, uh, with those, you just might need one, you know, like, and, and that, that gives you more, um, that gives you more of a, uh, a jump on the uh, yeah. competition. But yeah. as far as my field, right, computer mm -hmm. engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, um, more than likely, you won't need it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And... I say you don't need it because you might want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are different ways to do it, right? The, the dream is you're working at a company and they're willing to pay for you to get your master's. That's the yeah. dream. Yeah. The alternate reality is you work on getting a certification on the same mm -hmm. field. Uh, for example, I kind of want to get a cybersecurity certification so I can mm. move to that side of things. Um, yeah. But more, you know, you, you might want to get your master, your MBA, mm -hmm. you know, it really depends on what you really want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And it really depends on the field. I can only speak on the computer engineering field. I know it's yeah. not needed, but you yeah. might want to do it, especially if you feel like you're somewhere in your career where you can't move past a certain, um, a certain uh, uh, ceiling. Mm -hmm. So what are some, uh, where are some like complementary uh, degree fields and like areas of study that can um that can pair well with like a background in computer uh, in computer engineering um like you mentioned an mba um right uh mba is a big one because yeah with the mba you can have your own business that's that's mm -hmm. you know that's that's perfect um and then you can go into you can go into i think i think the most known ones are cybersecurity. Yeah. Artificial intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because it's everywhere. Um, artificial intelligence, you have Siri, um, you have Google, you mm -hmm. have Alexa, you have uh, Amazon. I mean, it, it's just every single company that even cars now, you have, uh, you have the Teslas where, yeah. where you can literally drive a car without touching it. 
And that, that that's a huge thing. And um, with cybersecurity, it's everywhere. Every single organization has a network. Every single organization has a circuit. And that security is needed. Um, so both of those fields are, are part of where I could go, where, I, where, I, where I'm able to go. Um, and again, it's really about where you, what you want to do. Yeah. Right? Because even sometimes, I know even back in college, some of the computer engineering uh, uh, students move to business or they went back to computer mm, science because mm. you can't you're allowed you can't change your mind at any point but you just yeah. need to know why you're doing it yeah so guys we are coming up on our 30 minute mark one question that we like to ask all of our guests uh, we know that you have all these amazing professional um, professional accomplishments and things that you're doing. What are some of the What are some of your passions like outside of work? What are some of your hobbies? Where are some of the some of the things that you like to do? Um, I'm a big foodie. I like. Oh wow! Yeah, I like eating. I've you been, cook? I've been trying to start cooking. Right? Um, it's like we're getting there. I got a couple go tos. Right? I got a couple go tos, and you know. Like, those I, I I got I got that for sure, mm -hmm. um, and I'm huge in basketball. That's always been okay. Everything, video games, real life, mm -hmm. uh, NBA, college mm -hmm. basketball. I'm just watching it, you know. Uh, but that that those are those are some of my biggest hobbies. Okay, and you also travel quite a bit, right? Yes, um, I try to most of the time. So far, I've been in the Caribbean. I'm mm -hmm. trying to go to Africa. Um, mm -hmm. And I really want to backpack through Europe someday. But oh, wow. those, are all, those are all on my list. And then mm -hmm. South America is like right there too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it's, it's going to happen, right? Obviously, this year is, is, a, is a tough one, right? Um, but Because have, 2020. Right. It's, it's a tough one. But I have a whole list of countries that I need to visit at some point for sure. And you've been to Jamaica, right? Yes. Where did you go in Jamaica? I went everywhere, honestly. I had a whole... <laughs> like, where didn't I go I had, in Jamaica? <laughs> I had a whole tour. I went to all oh, the wow. different, what's it called? Uh, district? Not district. Um, I forgot what the name is. The parish. I went to a mm. bunch of different parishes, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of different uh, side of the island, a bunch of different beaches. Um, it was amazing. The food was great. It's, it's not overrated. Yeah. Kamir said parishes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We also have a question from him. He asked, sure. in your role, can you set um, pretty clear boundaries between your work and your home life? Um, how often do, um, do work things follow you home? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I know for sure there is a boundary, but at sometimes, like I was referring to earlier, if it's a severity one issue, which mm -hmm. rarely happens in what I do, because I, as of this project, I'm in a testing environment, not production. Right. So when you're in a testing environment, you, you just need to make sure testing is happening 24 seven because at the end of the day, it's, it's my responsibility. It's part of my job. Um, so if something happens, right, if there is like uh, if there is a, a tornado that broke the lab in South Atlanta, then I'll probably need to get involved and figure out who can fix it. Right. Yeah. Um, so it happens rarely. Um, most of the time, it's a pretty even work uh, work life balance. Um, oh, good. And, and that's and that's very very nice. Not that doesn't mean the job is not stressful. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's easy. It just means when you're done with work, most of your team understands you're done with work unless mm -hmm. something important is happening, and it, it's nice. Olivia wants to know um, which was your favorite parish to visit in Jamaica. Uh, the one with uh, Boston Jerk. Whichever one has Boston Jerk restaurant in it, because that was one of my That's favorite. Portland, Port Antonio, right? That was one of my favorite restaurants of all time, and I've been wanting to go back just to go there. That's yeah. When, yeah. That's when I found out, like, oh, wow, I've been eating fake Dominican food this whole time. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had to move to Jamaica to uh -huh. learn that jerk is not just a seasoning. Like, it's, it's actually a way that you prepare it's the meat. It's a meat. lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Listen, You're I learning. was like, what, what have I been fed hey. this entire time? You're like, <laughs> I'm a You're whole learning. adult before I figured this out. Mm -hmm. But it's fine. Once you know, you know. 
Yeah. You know like, better, you do better. You can go back. Never go back. I can I never can't, go back. I can't look back. I don't even want to go to Jamaican restaurants here anymore. It's like, exactly. Is it worth I'm it? like, no. what? What is this? This is yeah. not. This is not real jerk. Exactly. <laughs> awesome sauce. Do we have any final questions for Elijah before we let him go? No, I think not. Well, Elijah, thank you so much for taking the time out this Monday to come and talk to us. Um, guys, make sure that you follow Minds of Jamaica on social media. Please visit our website, mindsofjamaica.com to learn more about the different mentors, um, different mentors that we have and um, all of their different backgrounds and areas of expertise. Um, Olivia has one, um, wants one final, um, uh, one final word of advice for students who are moving forward um, in this COVID period. Um, I feel like right now we're all going through it together, right? Yeah. Um, but if I was a student, for sure, I would say um, figure out how to actually learn yeah because i have a lot of i have a lot of um, little cousins here that are in high school and everything is online and i'm realizing like are they really learning right mm -hmm. yeah you're in the class yeah mm -hmm. you're yeah you're um you're you're looking you're looking around you're 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 you're, you're doing the homework but everything is online now right with yeah. technology nowadays all the answers are online so you have to actually decide do i really want to learn this or i just gonna mm -hmm. get an a Mm -hmm. right and, and that's that's one of the biggest advice i can give you is don't take the easy route mm -hmm. um even if you're taking classes right try to make sure you're learning what you're supposed to be learning because at the end of the day i'm hoping this doesn't last forever right so you're gonna yeah. have to go back to school eventually and when you get back there are you gonna be able to catch up with everything that's going on because absolutely more than likely it's not gonna be like a covid review of everything you might have missed out. It's just going to be like, yeah. you either know it or you don't, you either make it or you don't. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's that would be my advice. That's so true. And I think another, another practice that I've had to adopt is really establishing a routine and a sense of discipline in yeah. like, in my, in my daily routine, because it's like, if you're not, you're not physically yeah. going into the office. It's really easy to fall into these bad habits of Sit sleeping until, listen, sleep until eight, sleeping yeah. until, sleeping until nine, yeah. like all of these, all of these other things, like not working out. So I found that I have to like, I have to set a routine for, sure. for how my day is going to go and it keeps me productive. Right. Even yeah. if like gotta be up by 6 a.m making sure we're we're eating breakfast at the same time we're working out we're logging we're logging in by 7 30 taking a taking an hour midday to go and like work out or do yoga mm -hmm. or something like just making sure that there's a routine there so that um there's still like a sense of a sense of discipline and structure in what it is i'm doing no, nothing worth it worth it comes easy right it, you yeah. always, always gonna be easy to just sit on the couch and relax Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, hey, no one is around. No one's looking at me. I can just chill. You know, I'm, it's not like I'm in face to face meetings like this right here. I can just relax. Uh, mm -hmm. And once you do that, then you're. In I'm back. Yeah. I think it, I think we had another question about mm -hmm. I, I think this actually alludes to what we're discussing about um like the benefits of using um like using a co-working a co-working co space or going to the library mm -hmm. or um something like that versus um versus like doing your classes or doing your work from home okay so with the library with covid with covid all of this is, is <laughs> complicated right it's like because it's like you leave the house and... Right, but you want to leave the house. But is like, it as safe? I want, to, I want to, you know, be healthy You as want well. to be productive, but you do want I, to be safe. Right. Do I want to go to a library and wear a mask the whole time? Mm -hmm. Right? So what I've been doing is, for sure, I've been going to different parts of the of the house. Mm. So my... Can, my, my <laughs> switch up right the scenery. Is, 
uh, <laughs> switch up the scenery. Is, but I've yeah. been moving around almost every week. I have a different spot because you want your mind to keep, keep to keep working. Right? Yeah. You don't want to grow used to one spot. Um, yeah. And as far as working uh, remotely and going different places, I wouldn't. I'm not really a library type of person. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's too enclosed. Mm. I'm more of uh, like a. Um, I would rather go to a different house or a different section of the house. Um, I would go to the park. Um, I, I'm more of an outdoorsy person. Like I would yeah. go to a patio at my house, or I'll go to yeah. someone else's house just to just to just to experience a different um, different nature, a different type of environment. Absolutely. Now, see, I'm the opposite. Like, mm. I need to be in the same spot every day. This is my working spot. Fall asleep. Like. This why this I work location. So I've actually found this is crazy. Like I found that sitting on the floor, I have like my giant floor pillows, and I will sit on the floor and like do my work from there. And it's great. Like I don't I don't have the temptation to fall asleep because it's <laughs> it forces you to like it forces you to sit up, it forces you to work on your posture. But I'm like incorporating these floor pillows and like doing it from the floor versus uh, versus like sitting at a um, sitting at a desk or something like that has really made all the difference for me. At this point, whatever works, whatever keeps you awake, whatever yeah. keeps you active, whatever gets you focused, yeah. go with yeah. it and run with it because yeah. we have no clue when this is going to end. So keep yourself keep yourself going. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Elijah, thank you for dropping these gems, sharing your words of wisdom. Um, again, if you have any other questions for us or requests for other guests who you'd like to see on our, um, on our Mentorship Mondays, please DM us um, and make sure you're following us on, um, on social media. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Elijah. You're welcome. You Bye. have a great day.